now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, I'm Alex. That's me in red. The show is The Ramble, and we're here until midnight tonight coming to you from New York City. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, what are you, what are you, what are you laughing about? <laughs> what? No, just go ahead. Just no, what are you? Just, come on, come on. This is Steve Kravitz, ladies and gentlemen. What the fuck are you laughing about? I was laughing at you. Why? What was I doing? Oh, the whole old man blowing your nose bit. Well, I mean, old men blow their noses. Well, I blew my nose when I was a kid. I was a. I, I had sinus problems. And I had allergy problems. And I was always the kid, you know, that came to school with the red eyes and the. And the Blowing his nose all the time. You remember those kids, don't you? Sure. Well, that sure. was me. And look how well you turned out. Now, was that one? Were you one of the kids that made fun of us kids who blew our nose? No. Well, I mean, what kind of kid were you in school? Um, I was not a good student. And that's not the question. We were all terrible students. That's why we went into comedy and radio. Okay, <laughs> but, right. but you weren't a good student. Okay, but that's not what I'm asking. There was like the the in crowd, and there was like the nerds. You know, the the kids who just didn't fit in. What were well, you? Was, then then you put me with the nerds. Really, that bad, huh? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. You know? Yeah. I was also I'm mean, gonna give you an example. I got caught skipping school in the first grade. <laughs> you mean you, you quit it while you still weren't even tired of it. Right. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I and the the deal was you we walked to school. We'd walk down the hill. Mm-hmm. And there was, they'd ring a bell, and we'd have to line up. They'd ring a second bell, and we'd go into class or line up, had to line up for class. So when the bell rang, I hid behind a tree. <laughs> and then the second bell rang, and I kept my cover, and then I started walking home, figuring I'd be eating, you know, Twinkies and watching uh, Howdy Doody for the afternoon. And as I'm walking up the hill, Guess who's driving down the hill? Your father. My mom. My mom. Your mom. Oh. So, and you got you got busted, right? Yeah. And then I got expelled in the th- second grade. Second grade exp-, exp. Oh wow! You really were working at it. You were really working it. Yeah. Well, you know, too much time on my hands. I, I guess I was like bored in school. Uh. You know something? I don't think there's anything wrong with being bored with school. I think school was really boring. Yeah. And I think that's the fault of the educational system. Because, it, you know, enjoying school is something you should enjoy, but they never made it enjoyable. They made it a drudgery. Yeah. Well, you know, between homework and we're going to have a test today. I mean, it was all tyrannical. Yes, it was. You know, I often felt... Here was the thing that bothered me when I was a kid, and even when I was a kid, that they would always ask us questions. And if we answered the question correctly, we got an A, right? Right. So what was that more than social programming? In other words, they were programming us to give out with the right answer. Now, there was a guy years ago by the name of Dr. Banish Hoffman. How I remember that name, I have no idea. Okay. But he wrote a book called The Tyranny of Testing. And his argument was that there are two correct answers to every question. Or at least two correct answers to every question. But yeah, what, right? you, what you're doing with tests in school is what you want is the correct answer. The one you want to program into them. Right. Okay. Um, 
The argument being that, for instance, any question you would ask, there are actually two correct answers, one of which may be a little bit out there, but it's a correct answer. Oh, for, give me an example. Um, oh, let me see here. Let me see if I can give you a good example of it. Uh, what is an animal with whiskers and fur? A cat. Well, let's see here. Uh, is, is, don't dogs have uh, whiskers too sometimes? Yeah. Oh, yeah, they do. Yeah, see? So the two correct answers to every question. Okay. Um, um, I'm trying to think of a question you would have been asked in school, but there's always a second question you could ask. It's a little more nebulous, a little more ethereal, but it could be a correct, considered a correct answer. Right. But what he, what he essentially was saying is, is that what schools are trained to do is they, you're like a computer. They program you, and if you spit out the right answer, you pass, and if you don't spit out the right answer, you fail. And that's you because... It, and that's with Pavlov's dog. Right, but what they're doing is, for instance, I'll give you a good example. When I was a kid, I loved the psychology, so I took psychology in high school. And our textbook, chapter eight, I think it was something like that, was all about um, homosexuality and I had a teacher who was gay so he missed that chapter <laughs> he just uh, what's what, we go to chapter chapter 8 next teacher no look, look read chapter 9 <laughs> yeah, you know and, and in other cases I remember once in school okay here's a good example of the correct answer the, the, I had a teacher in college who had us read an, a, a, an essay uh, called Communism versus Democracy. Okay. All right? And the next day I came, we came in and she said, anybody have a comment on the Communism versus Democracy? And I said, I do. And she said, what is it? I said, well, this article is completely fallacious. It, 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 it uh, has a wrong premise. She said, well, why do you say that? I said, because you can't compare communism to democracy. Communism is an economic form, and democracy is the relationship of a government to its people. And she said, you're wrong. Next. That was it. That was it. Now, I, I think I was right. You know, to this day, I maintain that I was right in my assumption that, that by comparing the two, you were prejudicing the student. Yeah. You were thinking that the, the polar opposite of communism was democracy. Right. That's not true because there have been... Uh, Allende in South America, when he before he was assassinated, was what he called a democratic communist. He believed in voting, he believed in the will of the people, but he also believed in a communist system as the economic system for his country. Huh. Okay? So we get programmed, and if we get programmed right, we get A's, and if we don't get programmed right, or, or think outside the box, we get Fs. So that's why I didn't like school. I found school very, I found it drudgery. I found it, you know, draconian. I mean, tonight we're going to read chapter 47. That's your homework for tonight. Right, right, right. right. And it's very nice. So occasionally I think maybe there should be homework because there are things you can't cover in an hour. But then when you've got like six classes and every one of them are giving you homework, you've got more of a workload than you had at school. In some cases. Yeah. I mean, I just hated I hated school. I just hated it. I think I, 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 I liked school probably once I got to college. Okay. All right. But there, that was a... That was a place where people thought a lot, okay? I, you know? I mean, uh, there was a lot of thinking going on. And and uh, and, and uh, so that was, uh, you know, completely different situation, I think. Right. Uh, you know, colleges always and universities always thought of themselves as a place where we sought out knowledge. Right. It wasn't right, programmed right. into us, so... I right. think that's probably why you like college. I never, I, I did two years of college and I got bored with it because I wanted to be a radio, I was in broadcasting. Right. And I so I wanted to study broadcasting. So I studied broadcasting. 
And then what I learned was, I w by doing it, by working at a job, I was learning more than I ever would sitting in a classroom pretending to do radio. You know? Right. So I quit. I just figured, you know, somebody else needs this seat. Right? I, I don't need it. And I didn't need it. Not, not for my profession. No. I imagine as a comedian, you probably never needed college either. No, but I went to college for different reasons. I went to college, A, to uh, see different, live in different cities in Massachusetts, and I got to live in France for two years. Okay. That, that, was, so, that was a treat. Yes. Yeah. And I got to study with the actual masters, guys that... One guy actually created a style of theater that I studied with. Oh, really? And the other guy was the last living master of Commedia del Latte, which is 15th century Italian comedy. So, so it, it, answer me this. Uh, how did you get to go to France? I mean, was it part of your college curriculum, or how did that I, work? I, my junior year, I designed my last two years. I wrote up my curriculum. Mm -hmm. And I went to a division called Bachelor's Degree in Independent Concentration. Wow. And in it, I wrote in, I would like to go here to study with this gentleman for these reasons. And I had a faculty advisor. And I want to study with this gentleman for these reasons, blah, blah, blah. And they okayed it. So I got credit to, while living in Paris, I was getting credit at UMass. Oh, okay. Wow. That's terrific. And then, and then when I came home, I did a demonstration at UMass. And that was kind of like my test. Oh, wow. What a cool... It must have been... You enjoyed living in Paris for two years, didn't you? Very, very much. Very much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, it's... To begin with, it's a beautiful town. Yeah. It's just gorgeous. And secondly... Everybody is a different word for everything over there. Well, yeah, because it's in French. <laughs> you know what I used to say? I, I always used to argue this, that, you know, American kids are stupid. And people would say, why? I said, well, you go to a place like France, and do you realize that every child in France speaks fluent French? <laughs> I said to a guy, when I first got there, I said to a guy, Polyvoo Anglais. And he turned to me and he said, yes, I speak English, but I don't speak American. And he walked away. <laughs> the, uh, the one thing I found about the French that bothered me, though, is they're a little snobby about Americans. They kind of well, had an attitude about Americans. That's our fault for, you know, after uh, World War II when we basically gave them money to rebuild Paris, rebuild yes. France, and then we were there and we were obnoxious. We expected everybody to speak English, you know, yeah. walking around. Putting our well, we had the attitude of we saved your asses. Oh, yeah. And, and nobody likes that attitude, you know. So that's it, it's a, there's a, there's a, there's a conflict there. I mean, it's it's better now. Mm hmm. Oh I yeah. Know, when I was there, they were trying to get rid of all the Franglais words. Well, the one day that I I when I, every time I went to France, I felt like they didn't want me there. I mean, I I went I went to the I remember going to the Eiffel Tower to the second floor where there's a restaurant there and going into the restaurant. And I don't know. I was wearing a soccer t -sh a soccer shirt or something that may have been right. the wrong color, you know. And they wouldn't serve me. I mean, they, a, a waiter and the guy would walk right by me. You really? Know? Yeah, I felt like they really hated me. You know, that's why when I find I was on my way to to Spain, so when I got to Spain, I really love Spain because the Spanish are the opposite. The Spanish will. If you don't know how to get somewhere and you don't speak the language, they will spend an hour with you trying to understand what you're saying and help you. Right. Whereas the French, if you don't speak it perfectly, 
No, well, that's not true, Alex. Well, no, there's, there's, there's a big difference between Parisian French and the outside of Paris French, uh, yeah. France. Yeah. They're very helpful, very sweet. Like in southern France, you think you couldn't ask the nicer people. You're right. You're right. You're, I've been there. You're absolutely correct. But my wife, my ex-wife, spoke perfect French with no discernible accent because she learned right. it from her mother. Okay, it was it wasn't like it was like maybe there was a you got a sense that she was it wasn't Parisian, but it she spoke perfect French. Right. And we went to France and she spoke French to them and they acted like they didn't know what she was saying. You know, and she spoke perfect French. Right. You know, so I bet they noticed she was an American. So they were going, huh? <laughs> you know. <laughs> I mean, the Parisians are the worst, okay? Well, then go there in August, because in August there's no Parisians in Paris. What, 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 did, they, what did somebody once say? Um, uh, you could, uh, you could uh, conquer uh, Paris uh, in, what is it, Nove uh, 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 August. August. You, could, you August. could conquer Paris in August by telephone. You know. They're all gone. They have a month vacation. Right. Don't ever go there, by the way, in August because all the stores are closed. Everything. And, is, and the only people there are tourists. Yeah. Yeah. And they have nowhere to eat or anything because it's all <laughs> closed. Um, but I so hated Paris on one trip I went there that I had to go to Spain and there was going to be a strike the next day in Paris. And I was supposed to be there the next day, so I left a day early because I didn't want to be there for the strike. No. Why would you? Yeah. I was also in, uh, where was it? I was in Greece when I was sitting on the tarmac in an airplane and it couldn't take off because there was a three-hour strike. A three-hour strike? A three-hour strike, yeah, yeah. And then when the three-hour strike was over, boom, took off. Yeah. That's absurd. Yeah, yeah. That's just that's just ridiculous. Well, I mean, they do they they they, they take care of business over there, you know. I mean, they're going to have a strike. They're going to have a strike. They don't give a crap about you. But uh, I just remember uh, Paris. I I mean, I love Paris. It's a beautiful city. God, you know, it's just the people that sometimes are hard to deal with. And you're right. The south of France, they're much nicer. You know, people could say the same thing about New Yorkers. Alex. What the fuck are you saying? <laughs> you know exactly what the fuck I'm saying. Well, here's the epitome of New York, right? Fuck you. Fuck me. Fuck you. Right. That's New York. Right, 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 right. Yeah. No, New Yorkers, I don't think New Yorkers were ever nasty. I think New Yorkers would, if you didn't know how to get to the Empire State Building, they would give you directions. Yeah, yeah, but what if you didn't speak English? Oh, well, then fuck you. <laughs> yeah. Right? Well, if you don't speak English, we don't understand what you're saying. Yeah, but you wouldn't take the time to help them. Well, that's true. That's true. Right? Well, I, I think I would. I would. I would make my best attempt, but I really don't speak any other languages. I spoke a modicum of, of, of Spanish because... Uh, uh, when I was in Spain enough that you know you, you become somewhat semi-functional with that. I found right. I found you you as a former mime. Easy, huh? Easy. No, no, Easy. no. You you will appreciate this that in you can speak almost any language to a person of that language, even though you don't know it, by using a lot of mime. I mean, a lot right. of what we say anyway is I want to eat. You right, know? right, 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 uh, right. And right. and so, uh, really, uh, I I if you want to communicate with them, usually you can. I mean, for instance, I learn how to say that, okay, in 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 Spanish, okay. So I right. can go into a pastry shop, look at an eclair, point at it, and go that. Right. 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 And I'm fine. So a, a lot of a lot of language is body. And uh, you can use your body to get a lot of things across, you know. Oh, sure. Yeah. Sure. So, 
so you don't need to be nasty and you know so i i if if somebody is is making an attempt to you know get his point across using his body and stuff i'll 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 stop and help him but i don't uh, i don't that how often does that happen to a new yorker they meet up with a foreigner who can't speak english you know right it, right, it, right, it, right. It, it, very rare and New Yorkers, you know, by and large, I've always found that New Yorkers are ki kinder than most people give them credit for. In fact, I don't think, do we still have that gruff added, that gruff reputation? Yeah, I'm sure you do. Oh, really? Oh, I'm okay. sure you do. I mean, you know, uh, uh, what, I love about, what I love about Andrew Cuomo, outside of the fact that he hits up on women, and that's cool, uh... <laughs> is uh, uh, what I like about Andrew Cuomo is that he is such a New Yorker that I like that, you know? He, he, right. they, they, say, they say he's gruff and he's uh, tough and it's an at toxic atmosphere. Well, that toxic atmosphere is his attitude. He's from fucking Queens. What do you expect? Right, 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 you right, know? right. I mean, he is of the fuck me, fuck you school of arguing oh, yeah so you know they say well we did a lot of people didn't like him because he was gruff and everything what kind of new yorker are you if you're bothered by andrew cuomo's attitude you know so anyway i love i but uh, it was just i think it's so cool that you lived in in paris for you know two years yeah yeah um, uh, you must have eaten baguettes out your ass. Yes. And of course, and you... a lot of and a lot of camembert, tea, uh, camembert cheese. Yeah, and and the fact of the matter was, is you were living in Paris as a young man, and probably did not have a big budget. Like no budget. Like no budget. So it was always camembert and and a baguette, right? Right. Right. Was camembert cheap enough? It was cheaper than you could get a baguette with camembert all the way across it, the whole baguette, mm -hmm. for three francs. So it's 75 cents. Okay. Cool. And that now, was... If, if it was brie, it probably would have been like $3. Oh, okay. But but you that would fill you up for the day? Well, that would be a snack. Because when I was when I was a kid living in Hollywood, because I was with the Armed Forces Radio and Television Service, and I was on a military budget, all right. Uh, I, um, uh, I I subsisted entirely on Kraft macaroni and cheese. Okay. Because I could buy a box of Kraft macaroni and cheese in those days for nineteen cents. Right. And I could make that up. Eat it and it'll keep me full for half a day. You know. Well, also don't forget to supplement my my budget. I would perform on the street. Yeah, I play my guitar in the metro. Yeah. Um, the weekends I would go to the place called Pompidou, uh -huh. and I do pantomime for the tourists. Yeah. You know, I get stuck in the box. I would pull the rope. I. Yeah. Well, whatever it took to get my, their money in my hat. Did you wear white face? Yep, whole you, thing. You did the whole thing with the white face and the whole thing, yeah. Whole thing. Now, who who set up that style? Is that was that an old style, or did Marcel Marceau establish it? No, because you can actually um, the movie uh, The Children of Paradise. Right. Les enfants de paradis. Les enfants de paradis, which is very. Les enfants de paradis. Yeah. yeah, it's about Pierrot, and the reason he wears a white face is so people in the back can see him because they didn't have rake theaters. Oh, okay. Rake theaters, by the way, are when you when you're in a theater and it's kind of goes up. That's right. A, that's a rake theater. Right. Yeah. Because they they were more performing uh, on the street. Yeah, and wasn't Marcel Marceau in that picture? No. No, he wasn't? I thought he was. My The guy who taught me corporeal mime yeah. is in that picture. Wait a minute. If I remember his correct name correctly, Jean Perrault Bel Barrault? Jean-Louis Barrault. Uh, Jean-Louis Barrault, right. 
right? right. And, and um, Etienne de Crew. Etienne de Crew is my professor. Aren't we getting terribly snotty here, folks? <laughs> hey, we've run out of time, so we can't get snotty anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Hey, great talking to you again, my friend. Let's do it next week, okay? All right. I'll put it in the book. L ladies and gentlemen, that there is Stephen Kravitz. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Alex. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yeah, I love talking with Steve. I love talking with Steve. He is so intelligent and uh, so so traveled. I mean, you know, I find out it's funny, you know. Oh, excuse me. I didn't turn on my lights. There we go. <laughs> There's always something I'm forgetting these days. Anyway, I I uh, I really um, uh, every day, every time I talk to some comedian, I always find something out about them I never knew before. You know, so. That's uh, pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. Okay, listen. Um, I want you, if you get a chance, go over to YouTube, and there's a video there of my interview with uh, uh, Debbie Durst, all about uh, the problems that uh, Will has had over the last year with his stroke and so on, and the cost of doing business uh, with the hospitals, and oh, it's just, you know, it's quite a story. And uh, she speaks it well and tells you how you can help along with, uh, uh, with his recovery. And um, uh, I, uh, I, I decided that I would do that and then spread it out over the Internet and ask people if they wanted to, you know, deal with, uh, with this and will they watch it. And I'm asking everybody to go online and maybe spread it out to the people they know and so on. And it's starting to gain some traction, so I am I'm thankful for that. And we may play that interview next week, but uh, for now, it is just basically online. Oh, I'm going to sneeze any second now. See, here we go with the, with the old man with the tissue, okay? Mm. It's what they call white balance. There we go. Uh, okay, all righty. Well, I think that we probably should bring in our Zoom panel. Uh, and that would be a matter of me pushing this button, and then you will see everybody start, uh, see how they all keep, uh, start jumping in there, and they're all part of uh, the thing, and there we go. There we got the initial group, and hopefully we get a few more people in addition to this. So we got uh, Jeff uh, up there. Hi there, Jeff. Uh, uh, yes, the uh, car uh, car th the, uh, the, uh, the car jacker <laughs> and uh, car thief. Not car jacker. Car thief. Tom, Is that Tommy Yamaguchi? Told you guys this. It, it, Tommy Yamaguchi said it's uh, Will Durst's birthday today. It is Will Durst. Uh, Will Durst's birthday today. In mm. fact, I sent him a note uh, wishing him a happy birthday. I want to <laughs> see did he get it. Well, I I don't want to bring it up because then it'll show up on the screen and everything. But uh, uh, I wish him a happy birthday today. And I tried to call him actually, but he wasn't answering. So he probably knew it was me. So that's why. Yeah. Hello to uh, Alan, and hello to um, uh, uh, to uh, uh, Robert, and Jeff, and Brian, and Trucker Steve, and Charlie, and now John Larkin, who has also joined us. So this is the same bunch we had last night, by the way, except Kevin isn't there yet, <laughs> you know. But, but, you know, you could call, too, if you're watching, you know. I'm sick and tired of all those people who sit there in the, in the aren't you, uh, Charlie, in the, in the uh, room, in the chat room, yeah. and they're complaining yeah. about stuff. Or they'll write me a letter and say, yeah, I didn't like the show last night. It sucked. You know, <laughs> and then I go, well, if it sucked, why didn't you call and make it not suck? OK, yeah, they keep they keep messaging us, telling them to get you off the show. Do they, off really, Alex. Really? It's terrible for the show. Bringing you guys down. That's what it says on the notes right now on YouTube. No, it doesn't say that. I can read them. <laughs> In fact, one guy said, I says, I listened to Alex from about 1971 to 1978. God, oh. who can remember that far back? Well, that, that was in New York City. 
And wow. you were in New York. Yeah, like Robert, did you listen to me back then? I absolutely did. You were a kid. I, I listened to you back when you were a serious political commentator. Oh, okay. Well, you <laughs> had Abby on all the time. You had yeah. Jerry on yeah, quite yeah. a bit. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. you were heavy duty, yeah. you know, political commentary. And I could, back only, then. I could only do that for a while before I started to uh, start eating away at me, <laughs> you know? Uh, and when I went to San Francisco, I started having comics on it. It didn't mean that I didn't get political, it didn't mean that I didn't have uh, political comments. In fact, I felt that what I was saying in, a, in the context of a comedy show got more points across than it ever did when I was doing a serious kind of issue-oriented talk show here in New York City because people were listening to be entertained and they would get a little message here and there, you know? And I thought that was far more subversive. Yeah, so. I, it looks like you disagree with me, Robert. Um, I, I don't know because when you went to California, I kind of lost track of you. And then someone I knew in California said that you were uh, on radio and I said, oh, he's great. And and he started talking about you with comedians. And I said, comedians, what are you talking about? <laughs> well, you know, know, I remember him when he was talking to Tanya slash Patty Hearst, you know, or at least talking about her yeah. and mm. Angela Davis and Jerry Rubin and all those topics. And I thought he helped form my political leftness and he's telling me he's talking to comedians he went from it, jerry it, rubin to bob rubin well yeah, there you yeah, go yeah. it came as a shock to me yeah well it went uh, i went uh, from abby hoffman to uh um uh, who do you call it? Monty. huh Monty hoffman. what monty oh, hoffman Monty. yeah monty hoffman oh very good yeah, yeah. I, had, I had hoffman on i had uh <laughs> he he passed away and warren thomas passed away right oh yeah both of yeah. those guys uh -huh. yeah both of those guys were they were pretty they were <laughs> they well, were really edgy i like those well guys. i never i never thought uh uh, uh, uh monty Mar monty was that great you know yeah he was just a, just a character he was a character on and the yeah. other hand um warren thomas is maybe one of the funniest people i've ever known <laughs> you know uh, he was the riff master, you know. But you get into like a riff battle with him as a comedian, mm. and he'd always win. You know, mm. he was that good. He was really terrific. And, and if you told us then, when I was listening to you then, that you were doing all that stuff in New York, I would never have never well, have believed. Well, it. you know, the the beauty of radio, especially back in those days, is I could do, I could establish myself with a certain persona in New York City. Mm -hmm. And then I could move to the West Coast and create a whole secondary persona and not have to be a slave to the old persona, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, I was a young guy when I was doing that, and they were they, the, what they were calling me in the newspapers was the, gu, the uh, 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 youth guru. That was the term they used. I was the youth guru. Mm -hmm. Well... You know, it's pretty hard to keep being the youth guru when you keep getting older. So <laughs> when I went to San Francisco, I could then reinvent myself and reinvent what I did in another form. I was still kind of doing the same thing in a way. I mean, because my persona came along with it and all the ancillary parts of my personality on the air. But I was able to kind of like, uh, you know, take on a new persona and and i was very success i was more successful in san francisco than i ever was in new york yes john i, I before i ever heard you in san francisco i went to a comedy show that you were hosting at the keystone palo alto yeah and uh bobcat goldthwaite it was right when he was just getting started was on the set and then you would come in in the middle and introduce the next uh yeah uh, comic and when you'd come on, everyone goes, fuck you. And you were flipping everybody off too, you know? It was like, I was like, who is this guy? It, and he was going, that's Alex Bennett, fuck you. And you're going, fuck you. Yeah, it was a love fest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> then I started wow. listening and I then I got your stick. And I go, oh, this guy's good. Well, I never created what I considered a positive persona 
no matter where I worked. That was the similarity between New York and San yeah. Francisco, yeah. you know, that I never I never wanted to be loved because I figured that if a uh, if a talk show host or anybody doing radio was loved, then they must have done something to kiss the audience's ass. <laughs> And I didn't want to kiss the audience's ass. I had more mm. respect for them than that. You know how when in the late 60s, you liked the Beatles, but if you wanted to piss off your parents, you told them you liked the Rolling Stones. Well, you were the Rolling Stones, in effect. Mm. You know, like if I told a, an adult that I listened to you, to you, I would usually get some kind of a, a snotty remark. Yeah, yeah. Because you were out there to them, oh, you were counterculture. Yeah, I had long and, hair. I had long hair. Yeah, and the guests you had, and the, you know, the beliefs you portrayed were other than the norm. Right, right. And, but you see, here, I, it, I got to tell you, what I did in San Francisco wasn't all that different. Follow me on this one. In New York, uh, who I made a specialty out of having on were uh, music acts, rock and roll musicians, okay? And some of the <clears throat> left-wing political people. Rock musicians always were on my show, okay? That and, and folk music people, too, because that was a big thing at the time. And uh, uh, no one else was interviewing rock people. I was the only guy doing it at that time. Now, you may find that impossible to believe that there was a time when nobody went around interviewing rock and roll mm -hmm. acts, but there was a time. And when I first started calling people, I remember the first person I ever had on who was a musical guest, and, and it was Melanie. Remember Melanie? I sure, had a yeah. brand new pair sure. of roller skates, you got yeah. it. And I kind of liked the idea of having a musician on, so I asked the agent who was with her, uh, do you have any other rock people? And they said, you really want to interview rock people? Because it was considered rock people had nothing to say. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, they didn't. Okay. Yeah. You know. But I said, yeah, who do you got? And then, so next thing I know, uh, Delaney and Bonnie are coming in with Eric Clapton, and they're playing songs in the studio. And then the Grateful Dead is there, all of them except for oh. one. And they're smoking pot in my face. And then uh, the next thing I know, I'm doing this act. I'm doing people like Phil Oaks, and I'm having Pete Seeger on, and I'm having this. And before I knew it, I was the go-to guy for musicians to come and be interviewed. Uh, and so when I went to San Francisco, I was looking for something to kind of change that, okay? Find a new area that was maybe more in or create a new in. And I started interviewing comics. And nobody had comics on the air in the mornings. And I started using comics. And, and after I started using them, people all over the country were doing the same thing. And it became a thing, uh, bring the comics in. The only difference was I knew how to handle comics. Most of the hosts of morning shows in, in, in the country didn't know how to. You know. What is that? Oh, is, oh, is that? No, 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 no. Probably, I, yeah, I, hear, I hear. I hear. Is Brian talking to his dog? <laughs> <laughs> Rocky can talk. <laughs> oh, Rocky, yeah. yeah, it's, it's a Rocky talkie. The this Rocky is my movie. dog. How <laughs> dare you, sir? That is no dog. <laughs> See this guy right there with the black hat? He called you a dog. Yeah. Okay, good. And there's going to be a time coming up where guys are going to be knocking on the door and you'd wish she was a dog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, I'm because saying, so So really the act didn't change. I just changed the kind of people that I would have on. And uh, and, and I reinvented myself in, in California. And uh, I never felt at any time I sold out, you know, from what I did in New York. It was just time to change. You know, uh, Abby Hoffman was out of jail and out giving speeches everywhere he could without and trying to make as much money as possible. You know, uh, did, yeah. did you did, did you leave New York or New York? I mean, New York. But like if, New, if you would have stayed there longer or it was time to go. New York left me. Mm, got yeah. it. No, it was time for me to go. Uh, uh, you know, it, I, the, the persona had worn out. 
the time that I was doing it, it had worn out. And it's funny that when I was finally had worn out for me in California, I came back to New York because everybody said, come back here, there'll be work for you here. And sure enough, there was, you know. And, but you uh, went to Florida first. Oh no, that was that was a small period of time while I was in San Francisco, where uh, the station and I parted ways, and um, I I couldn't get hired in San Francisco because San Francisco I got to say this, it's a very um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, they don't like people who are successful and beat their ass in the mornings. You know, mm -hmm. so they would rather not hire them rather than say, hey, we can get him now. Instead, they mm -hmm. they want to reject you. So I had to leave <laughs> and I got offered a job in Florida. So I went to Florida. Oh, was that a mistake? Oh, my God, was that a fucking mistake? The anus of America. Oh, that's the worst place in <laughs> Miami. Oh, God, the most disgusting, despicable people I've ever, ever, ever had to deal with. Me? Just me. That's where I was at they, that time. They were, Except Albert. Albert's from there, right? He no, there. no, Albert's from... Uh, where, where, uh, Albert, I think, was born and raised in New York. Oh, but he lives there now, right? He lives there now. Yeah. I don't know why. Because <laughs> yeah. it's warm. I guess because it's warm. I guess as you get older, you want the warmth. You know? Yeah. I do. But uh, I, um, um, you know, that, that, so I, I went, uh, and then I came back to San Francisco and the station had found that their ratings had just completely disappeared and they wanted me back at the station, so I went back there. Oh, so what, what, was that when they, they had that guy named Perry something well, or Perry another? Stone, one guy got a guy called Perry Stone. They thought he was a good idea. Yeah, but he was, he was, he was, a, he was a, a shock jock. But he was, was just, he, yeah. but he was a horrible shock jock. Yeah, you know, um, you know, Charlie, so, what does your shirt say? What? <laughs> Charlie, what does your shirt oh, say? English. English is oh, that's important, cute. But yeah. math, <laughs> Im is important. math is important. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how many T-shirts do you have, Charlie? Oh, probably 40. Because I only got one. This one that says 1939 on it. And that's <laughs> it. You know, I don't even change it. I sleep in it. I wake up in it. <laughs> It smells. You can't smell it. You know. So. Probably got orange spray all over it. But as I say, you know, the wonderful thing about radio in those days, you could reinvent yourself. Today, you're like syndicated, and so you're all over the country, and, yeah. and you don't have the chance to reinvent yourself. Once you've been spent, and you're yesterday's news, goodbye. You know. I mean, I have to hand it to Howard how he's managed to last this long without people just getting tired of him. You know, so I had I had one encounter with Abby Hoffman. He mm -hmm. he spoke at my college and after it was over, I walked up to him and I asked him what I thought was a really bright, intelligent political question. What was the question? And he looked me in the eye and he said, dude, you're taking things much too seriously. <laughs> and he, he laughed and he walked away. Yeah. That's yeah. A, and how long did you stand there? Uh, I stood there with my mouth open for about five minutes, like, oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I um, um, you know, I mean, Ab yeah, that was Abby. <laughs> Abby was a master, though, at manipulating the media. Like, he understood how the media worked, and he knew how to create events that the media would latch on to, like the Yippie Party. By the for way, example. for people who, who don't know who Abby Hoffman is, he's Sasha Baron Cohen. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> uh, well, that was well helpful. Abby was great at manipulating the media because he was great at manipulating anybody. And, yeah, the, oh, and, yeah. and the reason I say that is, do you know what? <clears throat> do you know what? Uh, what he uh, he was before he actually became like the radical? What his profession was? He was a clinical psychologist. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. now, now that you say that. Yeah. He was a clinical psychologist. And um, the first time I met him, he knew how to hone in on something that would just stick a knife in between my ribs. Or at yeah. least it wasn't in my case. It wasn't my ribs. It was Ronnie's ribs. Because after we did our first show with him, we, we we took him out to have some a bite to eat after the show around midnight. When you can get a good meal around midnight in New York City, 
okay? And we're sitting there, and we just had a litter of kittens. And my wife was asking everybody, Ronnie was asking anybody who would get within shouting distance of her, do you want a kitten? And so she, she looks at him and goes, Abby, do you like cats? And Abby, without even blinking, and, and, and instinctively knowing just how to get to her, looked at him and said, are they good to eat? Oh, jeez. <laughs> and that was our first real encounter with Abby Hoffman, and we became good friends with him. Yeah, yeah the other white meat. <laughs> the other white meat. My favorite Abby thing was when I first realized he what he was wasn't totally on the level was out in Chicago in 68 when he invented the Yippee party and it made it into this big threat like people in Chicago were well, they, afraid the, that the, the Yippies yeah. were going to put LSD in Lake Michigan and yeah. they were well, they were that yeah. day's uh, 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 Antifa. Uh, Antifa. Yeah, in that, it was an idea. Well, what happened was one night uh, he and Jerry Rubin and Ed Sanders and Paul right. Krasner right. were all at, I think, either at, I think they were at uh, Phil Oates' place, but I'm not sure w w what the place was exactly, what, whose apartment. And they said, well, you know, we got the Democratic Convention coming up. Why don't we invent a fake group? Okay. <laughs> and so they started riffing and they came up with, uh, yippies. Yeah. You know, you mm -hmm. had the hippies, now here are the yippies. And they said, uh, you know, we'll start the yippie, National Yippie Party, and yeah. then we'll make people think there are tens of thousands of yeah. yippies going to Chicago. And daily shit his pants. Daily yeah. shit his yep. pants. <laughs> Truth be known, there were only about five yippies yeah right and if if maybe i want to count myself as a yippie you might say six okay but, but but there were you know and that's that's how that happened but when i realized he wasn't on the level was when they decided in chicago that they were going to nominate a pig for president named yeah. mr pigasus yeah and the slogan was, if we can't have them for bre for our president today, we can have them for breakfast, breakfast tomorrow. tomorrow. I don't remember that, but that, that sounds like what they would really come up with. <laughs> they, no, they, they really uh, did a, uh, you know, I mean, uh, Abby wasn't, uh, Abby was the real thing, I got to tell you that. I mean, from a political standpoint, uh, <clears throat> he, like Jerry Rubin, didn't know shit about politics. He, and he was, sold out really, but he, he oh he became a stockbroker. Oh yeah, uh, he, yeah. He, he yeah. was, he, but he was. Jerry Rubin was a. Uh, I never liked Jerry. Okay, never liked him. He would come to New York, right? I was the only guy. The problem was, I was the only guy among them who owned a car. Okay. Uh. So anytime Jerry would come to New York, he would ask if he could borrow my car so he could go upstate. <laughs> and and of course I was just a good guy. I said, sure, take the car. Go ahead. Well, one time he came and and I needed the car. So he said, Can I borrow the car to go upstate? And I said, No, I need it. And I never heard from him again. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, I mean he, that was the kind of guy he was. And he had no real political savvy. Abby was a great performer. He would have been a great stand-up comic if that's... He chose to do his comedy, but he chose to do it in the streets. Yeah. And he was a very, very funny man. I mean, were, I, I in that time period... There, yeah, oh, sorry. What were you going to say? I was going to say, in that time period, there were a lot of cars that were disappearing. Jeff Stein was in the neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, what I was going to say is, is that I... Uh, Abby was, to begin with, one of the funniest people I've ever known. And uh, also politically, one of the most savvy. And he also, as you say, knew to a T how to manipulate the media. Yep. You know, he's, he's the guy who went across to, at the park across from the White House, plugged in a television set, <laughs> took out a gun, and while the president was giving a speech, blew out the tube and yeah, said, I just, I just killed yeah. the image of the president. Yeah. And everybody was there to capture it, right? That was the kind of thing he did, and he was great at political theater. Did you get to meet Mario Savio? No. You no, didn't. that was East. That, you see, you had East Coast, you had West Coast. Mario yeah, he Savio was West, was West Coast. Coast. Yeah, he yeah. was UCL. He was uh, UC Berkeley. 
Berkeley, uh, right? Yeah. Um, uh, you know, New York was uh, Abbey. It was. It was. It was all the the except for Bobby Seal. Right. Uh, it was pretty much all the Chicago Seven. We're yeah. New. Oh, yeah. we're, we're West Coast, except no. Tom Hayden was was California. He was Michigan at first. At first, yeah. Yeah, the Port Huron statement, right. actually. But you know, you got guys like Dave Dellinger, and you yeah. had uh, you had Ruben, and you had uh, Abby, and you had uh, uh, Tom Freunds. Uh, he was a New Yorker. Yeah, was uh, was Tom Hayden really? You know, Tom Hayden. Was, to Tom Hayden was, was an asshole. Yeah, he wasn't even close. Is to he Hoffman, still alive? Right? I don't even know if he's still alive. Is he? No, he's, he's dead. He's dead. Good. Yeah. He was uh, a politician in California for a long time. Well, he, no, he, here's what Abby said to me. They said, we hate, we hate Tom. In fact, in, in the trial of the Chicago Seven, it's portrayed that way that they hate Tom. Yeah. And they hated Tom because, among other things, Tom had said, uh, I don't want to be on trial with the rest of these guys. I'm better than they are. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> You know, when when the idea was, hey, you're on trial together, let's put on a show, you know, let's make this, if we're going to go through all of this, let's make it work for us, you know. Wasn't he married to Jane Fonda? Uh, yeah. Yes, he was married yes. to Jane Fonda, yeah. He was a congressman or something in California for a while, wasn't he? Uh, yeah. Yep. 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 He tried uh, to be hip. He, 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 he was an asshole, just an asshole. Uh, the the rest of them were pretty good. They were okay. Seal never. They always say the Chicago Eight because it was. I think it was the Chicago. Excuse me, the Chicago Seven. It was the Chicago Eight. Yeah, but eight, then, right. Then uh, Bobby Seal. They tied him up to a chair yeah. in the courtroom with a gag around his mouth, and finally decided to excise him from the group and try him yep. separately. So it became the Chicago Seven. Yep. You know. Oh, S and M uh, in the Chicago courtroom. Hmm? Yeah, no, I mean, that was... Them. That Tied was, him up to a chair. Yeah. Put a gag in his mouth. Here, 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 this is in the movie, by the way, and it's it? absolutely true. It's absolutely true. Okay. The, the judge in the trial was Judge Hoffman. Okay. That's right. Judge Julius Hoffman, okay? Yeah. And at one point, he goes, uh, 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 and uh, will you please sit down, Mr. Hoffman? And he said, oh, that's Abby Hoffman. He's not my son. <laughs> or he's no relative, something like that. Yeah, something and like immediately, that. without thinking for a second, Abby goes, thanks, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, I mean, and this is in this courtroom. I mean, he, he, uh, Abby was brilliant. I loved Abby. As uh, later on, he kind of, you know, it might not wound up committing suicide, you know. The drugs or what? No, Alcohol? no. He had, I didn't know this. He was bipolar or something like that. Oh, okay. And uh, they, gave him, they gave him drugs to yeah. keep him from being bipolar. And he kept taking these drugs, and he felt that the drugs. It was easy. Wh what was that? The, the, the drugs were robbing him of his essence, of his ability to be funny and to write and to do things like that and he just he decided to stop taking the drugs and when he stopped taking the drugs the brain took over and he got depressed and he blew his brains out you know mm. uh, i didn't know it's not good for something yeah i well you know suicide's an acceptable form of self-defense as somebody once said but yeah. uh I, and i remember when it happened i was in new york uh I was doing my shows out of CBS here. Uh, we were on location, so to speak. And he had killed himself. And the people at CBS asked me for my opinion. And I just, I was so, I, I was gobsmacked by it because I, I loved Abby dearly. I had sp spent a lot of very special <coughs> moments of my life with him. I was with him when he was in, when he had, he had run away from New York to get away from prosecution and disappeared. Uh, he was living up in the, uh, up in the, uh, uh, what do you call it? The lakes up in Finger Lakes, you Finger, say? Uh, no, not the Finger Lakes, uh, up in North, uh, Northern New York, uh, all the lakes up there. Uh, anyway, uh, oh, the river, St. Lawrence Seaway, St. Lawrence Seaway. And he was actually running an organization to save the St. Lawrence Seaway. He was that much out in the open and nobody pegged him as being Abby Hoffman. Mm. And, uh, 
I, uh, you know, I, I had met up with him again at a party that he was at, and uh, um, I'll never forget it. My friend Steve Gruberg was with me, and I, he, he came up to me, and he said, you know who I am? And I look at him, you know, and it's kind of like he had a beard and stuff, and I, I, I said, he said, it's Abby. And then I look at him, and I go, of course it's Abby. You know, but until he said that, I had to, it had to all come into focus. And uh, so I'm hugging him and stuff, and all of a sudden, um, my wife at the time, Susan, and um, uh, my friend Steve and his girlfriend at the time, later his wife, Adrian, come over, and I'm hugging him, and I don't, all of a sudden, think of the thing, maybe this is my gay boyfriend or something. So I said, <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, this is my friend, and then I didn't know what to call him. Oh. And he said, uh, Barry Freed which was the name he was using. And I said, Barry Freed. And then I took him over to the side and I said, give me a call, come see me. And as we're walking down the street, I'm walking with my friend Steve and the two women are walking behind us. And he said, you know, and he says this at the top of his voice. He says, if I didn't know better, <laughs> I'd think that was Abby Hoffman. <laughs> and, 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 Ab and Abby comes running out of the restaurant and at the top of his voice yells, you got it. Oh, wow. <laughs> and then I went up to see him up in the, up in the, you know, the St. Lawrence Seaway up there around the lakes. I can't remember what they call it. A Thousand Islands. That's what it is. I should know it. The dressing mm -hmm. comes from there. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I, uh, uh, we went out in a boat, out in a little boat. Uh, when I first got there, he said, come on, I want to take you out in my little boat. And he got on the boat, with was a little motor boat. We got out in the middle of the St. Lawrence Seaway. And he stands up, and in the top of his lungs, he yells out, I'm Abby Hoffman. Hmm. And after screaming that, he sits down in the boat, and he says, I got to do that at least once a week, or I'd go crazy. Wow. You know? And he got he, back to the shore and they arrested you thinking you were <clears throat> Actually, he gave himself up about two weeks later to oh. Barbara Walters on national TV. And she was oh. acting like, oh, well, we, we went to the secret location. And I'm going, all he had to do was drive straight up to the, you know, to the, uh, to the uh, uh, Thousand Islands and turn left. You know, <laughs> go down about five houses and there's Abby, you know. But, uh, it, you know, there were stories like that the night that I met Tennessee Williams when I was having dinner at Abby's house, you know, things like that. There's so many stories in my life that I can tell that I associate with Abby. And I often said to people, you can't spend 10 minutes with Abby without having some story to tell, you know. And it, it was, it was, he was a very special kind of person to me. And I, you know, now that I, we're talking about it, I really, I miss him. You know, he's a, he's the co-founder of a youth international party. Well, that was the hippies. The hippies. The hippies. Yeah. The hippies. Uh, pay right, attention. Right. I was trying to think That's what the real name was. was. Well, no, it didn't have a real name. They called oh, it the he hippies. Made it up. Oh, right. And then they said, I oh, will call it the youth international party. Yeah. But it's mm -hmm. really the hippies, you know, because there were the hippies, hippies and they were yippies. And then there was another group that came along that was started by uh uh, Tom, uh, what's his name, Fassad, who owned uh, High Times Magazine, and they called themselves the Zippies. Oh, yeah. And they were trying to overthrow the Yippies. Oh, I mean, it was just, anyway. I don't that all kind of creeped up into Marin, too. Huh? Did A it, lot of that creeped up into Marin, too. Did it too. really? Yeah. 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 What, in what way? Well, with the dead and all those people up there. Mm -hmm. They kind of, you know hitchhiked off that i guess you'd say yeah yeah well a lot of them also were very close to abby or new abby or yeah you know yeah uh but i mean uh, we we don't have people like abby any longer we don't have yeah. that kind the 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 polit the uh, political people today take themselves too seriously and there needs to be somebody you know it was like i i described abby as being somebody who um uh how can I put it? Uh, who, uh, if there, if he was a carnival barker, outside shocks the shocks him into honesty, uh, outside <laughs> yeah. the tent, yeah, bringing him in, shocks him into honesty, right? But it, bringing them in, and then once they're in the tent, the other people get together and give them the sermon, 
you know, they give them the, the message. Uh, but Abby was, I loved Abby. God, he was terrific. And uh, um, they named his kid America because, yeah. uh, um, what's her name of the Jefferson Airplane? Uh, uh, Grace Slick had, Grace had a Slick. baby named China. Yeah. And so he named him America, <laughs> and he hoped that someday America would fuck China. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What, he, yeah, taught me, he taught me something very interesting uh, about uh, being in hiding, because he was in hiding for about a year and a half, two years, something, maybe more, maybe three years. In fact, at a certain point, I became his safe house in New York City. He would come and stay with me, and it would be a safe house, uh, because we determined that I wasn't being watched any longer. The FBI. Yeah, yeah. I, I had been watched for a while. But then they gave up because he never came by. But then, but anyway, um, he did this, um, you know, he was, um, he would come and stay with me. And it, it was like, um, uh, it, it was kind of a weird kind of adventure. I mean, it was kind of exciting in a way, you know. And uh, um, he, um, he then gave himself up. And uh, he, he, the reason he, ran away to begin with was he said I want to run away he said and the reason I'm running away is because um, I need time for this to for the for the heat of this to to go away and then to go to trial or be put into court in a more uh, open-minded atmosphere and he never threw he never threw you under the bus and said it was staying at Alex Bennett's no no <laughs> But nope. the thing was, the thing was that he was right because what happened was, if he had given himself up, you know, when it was time to, you know, the very beginning, they would have put him away for thirty years. Oh yeah. As a result, they gave him a year and a day, you mm -hmm. know, and uh, he could accept that, you know, and then, uh, you know, he was out and about. But by then I had moved to California, so I, I lost track of him. But he came to New he came to San Francisco to give some speeches, and I, uh, you know, I met back up with him. But uh, if anybody ever asked me who's who's the biggest character you ever met, I would say it was Abby Hoffman, without a doubt, without a doubt. Uh, isn't it question time, Robert? Yeah, up Robert, the, you got up some to the host of the show, huh? I, I, I think it's time for this first. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, presenting the sequel to my Doctor Doom, uh, uh, the, the, the real Doctor Doom, Charlie Wallace, who has tonight's death report, which is better. Well, I don't know, 1,375 dead Americans today. Yeah, well, that's better than it has been. I mean, well, it was more than yesterday, but yeah, it's better than No, that. but we were up around 4,000, if you may remember. Oh, a month ago, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so, you know. I think, I think we're going to see a fourth wave. Fourth. Oh, yeah. Oh. After all this spring break nonsense. Absolutely. Is Absolutely. And the, the anti-mask stuff in Texas. Now, what mm -hmm. are we having? We're having a problem here in New York, aren't we, Robert? Uh, I, I keep hearing about this, this you know, this... Uh, uh, new version of the of yeah, COVID. Yeah, variant. yeah, the variant. But is it is it is it a variant that defies the the? Um, I don't know. I, I don't, I'm not sure they know how effective the vaccinations are where it comes to all of these variants. I think all I do know is that the more people that take the vaccine, then the virus has less opportunity to yeah. evolve. Replicate, right? And, and, and they say that even itself. even with that, you might be you might get it, but it's not going to be serious, right? You know that. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I'm still not going out. I'm sorry. I'm just you know I'm playing so it safe. Now that they have the vaccine in a lot of people, they'll know soon enough, probably this month or next, if the vaccines are good against the variants. Well, they're That's bragging funny. down in Florida that they've opened everything up and the numbers are not going up. Well, there's uh, a lot of Republicans. And, and I'm saying there. not yet. 
Not yet. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But like I would... the guy that jumps off top of the Empire State Building and passes the 50th floor <laughs> saying, so far, so good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah good exactly. so far. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That was I, easy. I think they should all go to Rand Paul's house. Yeah. Oh, by the way, did you see yeah, that? Did you see that piece of shit on television? What an asshole! Time? What an asshole! <laughs> what an asshole! Today, but, it, but here's what happened. In case any, how many here didn't don't know what we're talking I about? It. Oh, it was uh, no just, news uh, Ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, uh, Him and Chip Roy show. Rand today. Paul. They, oh, they, Chip they, Roy. They, well, they ha I didn't see that part of it, but I saw He's been I, doing that for a week now. I saw the Rand Paul thing. And Rand Paul, who, by the way, is an optometrist, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. He, yeah. It's he knows not everything. Like he, it's not like he can even cure a cold for you. He knows right? it all. Yeah. <laughs> right? Take these drops. Yeah. He says, he, <laughs> said, he, he says uh, you know, you really shouldn't be going around telling people they have to wear masks if, they it's take, all theater. if, they, if they've taken the... Uh, the uh, uh, vaccine. vaccine. And and then he said, yeah, it's all theater. Yeah. <laughs> and then, then Fauci tried to explain 15 different times about the variants. But, yeah. Rand Paul but, but, had... but, but, but what I like is what Fauci finally said was, uh, se uh, uh, Senator, uh, this is this is no what stunt or whatever. This is no grandstanding. This is real. You know, shove it up mean, your ass in a nice way. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 good for him. What's with Rand Paul? I mean, what is his? He's an problem? asshole. He's, He's an always idiot. been an asshole. No, but does he wake up in the morning and say, "How can I be a bigger asshole than I was yesterday?" He does. Apparently so. I think I so. so. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But Chip Roy takes the cake for me oh, today. Okay. Now, He's what, on a roll, man. That guy with his chin diaper, and it just yeah. All day long, that thing just keeps coming down, and he just rambles on and on and on. And <laughs> well, wait a minute. So effectively, what he's saying is, first of all, he refer he he, oh, he, he referred to is lynchings, he, wait a minute. Is he a, you know, as part of his is, thing. Is he a senator yeah. or a congressman? He's a congressman, a congressman from, Texas. from Texas. Texas. Okay. Yeah. And was this was this part? This wasn't part of the uh, COVID hearings. This was probably part no. of the racism hearings yes. about the yeah, yeah. about the yes. Chinese and so on. Yeah. And he's concerned. And he's concerned that we're trampling on the right to rhetoric. Yes. He's yeah. not concerned that Asians are, you know, that the number of incidents against Asians has gone up radically. He's concerned with First Amendment rights, and in so doing, he somehow incorporated the use of lynching, um, First Amendment rights, and so on. Not enough and, rope in Texas. Yeah, right. From a tall oak tree. Let me let me let me ask you a question. And, and, and he's also been railing all week on the immigration issue too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, so he's well, not, he's not he's not he, that guy's out of his mind too. Let me let me ask you a question though here. Um, is it my imagination where those massage parlors say happy ending style massage parlors? Or yeah. weren't they? Yeah. Don't know. But he implied. I mean, yeah. I, usually, usually, you know, that kind of massage parlor is, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, you know, I, 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 but anyway, I assume if that they the, got flashing. If they have flash and neon lights yeah, outside, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, they, yeah they, it's not the recommendation from your Kaiser. No, yeah, it's, no. And, and it's not. It's not, not, there. It's it's not. You're not going to get like cover practice. It's not covered by. It's you can't not, use your Kaiser it's, card it's, there. No. It's not and covered. Yeah. Of, it's not, second of all, yeah, he's making uh, they're making a big thing that it wasn't the racist thing. It was a it was a gender thing. Well. That sounds like a lawyer talking to me who happens to mm -hmm. know that a hate crime could get punished about twice as highly yeah. as a gender crime. So yeah. I don't believe if you wanted to kill women, you would have picked a supermarket or a hair salon or, yeah. you know, oh, when, come on, yeah. I don't buy that shit. When he, said, when he said to the cops, it wasn't, I did it, but it wasn't racially motivated. It was sexually motivated. I'm thinking to myself, well, who he got off on that one. No, yeah. no. <laughs> no I mean, they'll, they'll, they're they're gonna they'll charge him with uh, racial crimes. But am, well, he am, also am, said am he I was wrong? Am I wrong in Florida. assuming that when we're talking about you know this kind of place, that the, the, these were really kind of happy ending 
What does that got to do with it? You yeah, keep bringing that up. Oh, yeah, no, he, he's he's the reason fixated I, the, on this. The reason I'm bringing it up is Looking because what I, found very, what I found very unusual today was that they flew the flag at the Capitol. Yeah. Uh, at the yeah. At, at Capitol White House. Capitol. White House. White yeah. House. And at, the Capitol. At half mast for the women who were killed in yeah. the massage parlors. Hmm. And I went, We've finally come to a point where we're <laughs> decent enough now to lower the flag at half mass for hookers. Yeah, I think that that's really, you know, I think that's a step forward. And what shouldn't it be at hookers? Shouldn't it be at full mass? Probably. <laughs> full <laughs> mass. <laughs> I'm, we're not, and I'm not trying to make. I'm not trying that's to make. A sign light. of ED. I'm, I'm not yeah. trying to make light of this because these are women. Who were trying to make a living and survive right. in and this country? And they were country. killed because they were Asian. And, and that's that, right. I, yeah. I, that, I don't think it was specifically because they were Asian. I think they happened to this guy. I think had some kind of guilt complex about. It. He this, went to these this places. Guy, they're going to throw I hate crimes BS on this on guy. That. Yeah, I, I don't. Yeah. I don't. You know, I think. Look, he killed them. Yeah. What more need be said? You know, yeah. he admitted yeah, but to he it. drove by 20 regular massage yeah. parlors yeah. You know, to yeah. get to the but, Asian ones. But what That's I find, right. what I find kind of sad is that part of this problem, I'm trying to put this in a way that people understand that I'm not trying, I, I have nothing against what these women were doing for a profession. What I have against uh, the society as a whole is these women probably came to this country and this was the only kind of job they could get, okay? Yeah. And they died for that reason. Uh, and, uh, and it's pathetic and it's sad. And I don't care whether he did it because he was against Chinese or because he was against Asians or because he was against hookers, you know? I, I, he was against people who, who give happy endings. Uh, none of that matters. What matters is they're dead. And we live in this culture that just every time we turn around, there's some kind of mass shooting and mass killing. And so this time, hey, there have been a lot of Asians who've been attacked lately. And they've been attacked because we had a president for the longest time who started calling it the Kung Flu because yeah. he's, he denigrated the Chinese. He made the Chinese look terrible. Because he's a racist. Because he's, yeah. well, he's a racist in that regard. And he has, oh, I think, George. is again responsible for the murder of these people. You know, this guy is simply the end product of all the hatred he created in this country. Yeah. And he probably felt, I mean, he could have just as easily gone to a massage parlor that, parlor that wasn't Asian, okay, and done his killing there, but he didn't. You know, he chose an Asian parlor. So I think that, uh, you know, it had to be in here somewhere. I mean, he can say, I didn't do it because of, of Asians. Uh, I did it because they were, you know, because I because went there. Because I went there, I came, and I felt guilty, you know? And then he drove to Florida. What? Well, his statement and then afterwards. then he drove to Florida, too. Just like yeah, his statement yeah. afterwards was he was headed for Florida to do more. Yeah. 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 Tony, but, till the heat is off, repeat it. After me, you ordered Chinese food. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Don't Next ever. Is, uh, God, I can't wait to sit down with you in Hoans again. They're not open yet, though. Uh, oh, really? And it's yeah. called what kind of food is? It's called Chinese food. Chinese. <laughs> My mother we used to drop it like crazy. It's Chinese. Food. Yeah, we're ordering. No, it's Chinese food. I forgot. I opened the thing. She kept all the menus. Yeah, menus like. Listen, food. I have uh, my wife, as you know, works uh, for a Chinese company. Excuse me, I'm going to sneeze here in a second. Hold on. Do they give happy endings too? No. <laughs> what the cookies? No, very. Oh, it's Christmas you, you bonuses. Know, uh, and they. That's are, right. <laughs> she, she works for the Chinese, who, by the way, are great employers. I got to tell you, they're terrific. All right, they have treated her so well and with such respect. But anyway, I, I divert. What I'm saying is, is that she works with people who are Chinese, who also work in her office with her, or that she deals with in, in Asia or whatever. She has one couple who we've come to really love, 
and they 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 don't even they're not even he used to work for this company but he doesn't anymore he's an american she's chinese strangely enough she was working over here for a chinese company he was working in beijing oh wow <laughs> right as an american and they met up with each other and they got married and so now, but they, it's it's funny that they you would think that you know she lived there and he lived here no it was the other way around but anyway they got married they had lovely people she, uh, they have children that are just gorgeous and uh, um, uh, she's a, the wife is one of the sweetest people in the world and he's terrific and I, I we love them both we just have a real and they're thinking of moving to China. Mm. And they're thinking of moving to China because they're afraid of what's going on now in this I'm country still towards for Asia. Question. So, so, you know, there is a real problem here. And it's perceived mm. as such by people who are Asian. Yes, what were you saying, Alan? I'm waiting for Robert's question. What question? I don't know. Normally he has a question <laughs> sometime, you know, and then everybody raises their hand and. Yeah, we found yeah, out yeah. about car hey, thieves. You know something, right? While we're talking about Chinese crimes against Chinese in this country now, uh, time for a funny question. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I got to say, time I, I got to right? That sure put a hole in that discussion. You know, you know, before I came in Tuesday, I watched that part. And Robert asked if anybody had ever hit somebody or been in a fight. Mm -hmm. And Alex said he had never been in a fight, but then he named not one, but four people that he got in fights well, only with. Only two people. Only two people <laughs> I've ever gotten into fights with. It was funny. It was only two people I ever got in a fight oh, two? with. I, it, I thought it was four. And one of them just, I watched it twice. One of them just died about a week ago. Oh. Yeah. So, uh, so I guess I won the fight. Did you uh, hear, yeah. uh, huh? Alex? Did you hear? Um, Annie Sprinkles died. What? Annie Sprinkles died. Annie Sprinkle died. Yeah. Where did you hear that? When? It was in the news. When? I don't know. A week or two ago. Really? I never heard anything about it. Yeah. Okay, who Annie is that? Sprinkles. Annie Sprinkles was. Um, Annie Sprinkle. Annie Sprinkle. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like a, a sex positive. Uh, she was. A, she started out. She was. A, she started out. Oddly enough, she was uh, running a uh, uh, the, uh, the, the no the the ticket booth at a theater in um, uh, I think Phoenix, Arizona, or Tucson. I can't remember which. In which uh, Deep Throat got busted, and uh, so uh, Gerard Damiano, director of the picture, came out there to help them with the case and all of that, and he met up with her and brought her back to New York. And then she came and did stuff with me on Midnight Blue, and we had a little thing going for a while, you know. Midnight for Blue time, for a short time. Um, and uh, how is Blue spelled? <laughs> B L U E. How oh, okay. do you spell Blue? I don't know. You, you were talking about sexual things, and G L E W. You and her had something going. Midnight Blue. Well, anyway, uh, and, but over the years she's maintained she's stayed a good friend. And uh, I, I'm, I was one of the first people to make her aware of, uh, of art, of her ability at being artistic, uh, because I would see stuff she would do. She did a thing with me that I videotaped, and uh, we took, uh, she wanted to do what she called the tit ballet. And what we did is we put on the Blue Danube waltz, and she would move her breasts. We just shot her from here down to her you know, below oh. her breast, and, she, and then she had velveteen gloves on, these big Is that on YouTube? Gloves. I want to look at that. It, it may be somewhere yeah. on there. And then yeah. she played the the, uh, the, uh, the Blue, Blue Danube, and she moved him to that, and it became an art piece. It wound up in, uh, in, in museums. Um, the only time anything I ever did wound up in a museum. That and one other time that I did a piece of work with uh, Yoko Ono. But I'm so uh, really. She's dead. Yeah, it was in the New York Times. Her obit bit was in the New York Times. She's pretty big. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I got. I got. Not be able to Google right that. Huh? Annie I Sprinkle. I'm sure I read it. Annie Sprinkle. 
Annie Sprinkle, okay, let's see here. Um, news, okay, Annie Sprinkle. Um, <laughs> it, no, it doesn't. <laughs> I don't Come on, anything. I know I read, I heard that. Doesn't say anything? No, no, Hard, huh? no, 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 no. <laughs> God damn it. Hmm. it. Who was it then? It was somebody like her. That you used to always interview somebody like her. It was I. I it was somebody on Same your show, name. huh? No, uh, I, I just put in. I just put in. Uh, um, uh, Annie Sprinkle dead, and nothing comes up. So it's it's. You need the O. It's somebody else. Oh. Well, somebody else that was you. You were always interviewing. <laughs> what do you mean? It was somebody I was always interviewing? Sean she Cassidy. No. Well, uh, back in San Francisco. Uh, uh, who do uh, about Tripper? What? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Who? She was a that's stripper. A good friend of yours, stripper. Not. Yeah, that's Annie Sprinkle, Sprinkle right there. That uh, uh, she's still alive. Yeah. According to Wikipedia, she's still alive. Yeah, I, yeah. I didn't think she was dead. You know. Who the hell? Where did I get that idea from? Hmm. Oh no! You know who it was? Oh, oh, oh yeah. Margo St. James. Margo St. James. I hardly ever had oh. Margo St. James on my show. He did a few times. A few times, but I and I can't even remember how often, you know. Yeah. But she was the same, you know, she was affiliated with uh Annie yeah. Sprinkle. Yeah, but it's a little different than Annie Sprinkle. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry, I got I got bad ex executive functions in the brain. You, well, you know, you know, John, next time when you when you have some news like that, make sure it says Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah, give us something to be happy about. Yeah. Absolutely. Mike Pence died today. Oh, no, wait. That was Herbert Hoover. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I knew it was some right wing guy. Yeah, but somebody. I couldn't remember exactly who. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I want to get Margo St. James and Annie Sprinkle mixed up. Come on, you know, I mean, come, I, 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 there are far too many people that, uh, that you, know, the, you know, the saddest day of my life was when the first woman died that I had ever had. No, that the first, I had the first woman to die who I had had sex with. Yeah. Was there a correlation? No, 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 no. Oh. <laughs> <clears throat> although, although my friend Bob Rubin, who we used to interview on this show, he actually was making love to a woman once, and all of a sudden she was dead still, and she died while they were having sex. Wow. wow. And I said, how did that affect you? I said, put me off of sex for a couple of years. I would think. <laughs> you know? Wow, really? Yeah. So he didn't finish? Huh? No. <laughs> oh, oh no! I said, "Did you come?" No, was that? Of, course, did. of course, that's a question. You're she's finished. Gonna... Yeah, she's finished. Adding yeah. new meaning to the term "stiffy." Yeah. <laughs> so, Brian, Brian, I thought Hold you on. collected. Wait, 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 wait. Go, 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 go! I'll see you later. Close it, the door. Brian, what? Peter Brian, just walked I in. You or... collected Cadillacs, yet we see a Honda in your front yard now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, that was amazing. Okay, well, we're out of time. We're, we're out of time. But I was here in the meeting like this. Usually I face out this way, out towards the front. Second time in three years, a car skidded across because it's like a little wide turn out there. And if you don't straighten back up, you go into our yard. Guy yeah, slid right across and went into our brick wall and into the fence next to Hey, that's it. We've run out of time. <laughs> Jeff, I have you, you said, have you said anything tonight? Yes, one thing, but what, I can't remember what. But you can't remember what it was. And neither can we, but we love having you here. If you weren't here, it would bother me, okay? Uh, I mean, every now and then I have to hold a mirror up to your up to your part of the screen to make sure, make sure you're still alive. alive. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you so much, uh, Robert. Love having you here. Uh, same thing with you, uh, uh, Alan. Uh, oh, it looked like you were using chapstick there, Brian. Brian, thank you so much. Thank you, Charlie Wallace. Uh, and thank you for the death report, John Larkin. I really appreciate it. Yeah, well, you know, those porno actresses, they all look alike. 
Uh, Tony, thank you. I appreciate it. You haven't said much tonight, but call tomorrow night and we'll let you spend the whole night and do all the talking, okay? Uh, uh, Kevin, good hearing from you and uh, great hearing from you, Trucker Steve. The rest of you out there, give a big wave goodbye and I'll give a big wave goodbye back at you. Uh, and, uh, you know, I will... Uh, there they go. There they go. Okay, that's our uh, that's our citizen panel for tonight. Hopefully, a lot of them will be here tomorrow night, along with maybe you. Hmm? Huh? Love to hear from you. Anyway, that's it for tonight. Uh, we'll be back again tomorrow night, uh, right here, same time, same station in life, 10:30 Eastern Daylight Time. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And uh, by the way, this is very important. Wear a mask out there. Stay safe. Bye-bye, everybody.